in the couples you've worked with, is there like the feminine and the masculine, is there different dynamics that come into play, uh, like dominant and submissive? Is there, is it like a dance where it just changes from minute to minute? Is there, di is there dynamics that you observe that both limit and enable uh, successful relationships? Yes. So there are, if we're talking about masculine, feminine, then how also are we could get into, are we talking about actual gender, identified gender, or are we just talking about these traits? Because like I said, I stonewall, which is typically in couples, something that is more associated with straight men. Um, but that's my style of coping when I get overwhelmed. Uh, that is not tied to any sort of success or non-success of a relationship. But what we do know is that gay couples, so lesbians and gay men, tend to be gentler with one another when they are having conflict discussions. I So that's actually been identified in the research and it's something I've witnessed and it's just fascinating. So with my straight couples, I'll be going through one of these, if we're processing a conflict that occurred, I'll be going through the sheet and it's very, very structured because you don't want couples doing more damage when they're there with you. You want them practicing skills that protect them from criticism, that protect them from contempt. And when I'm working with a straight couple, I am like a referee or sometimes I'll relate it to being like a ski coach and keeping people on a bunny hill. And you tell them, you let them make like two turns and then you stop them mm -hmm. and you meet up again because you don't want them to veer off. With straight couples, you are doing very short turns before you need to kind of intervene and rescaffold. I had a lesbian couple recently, and they were so lovely with each other. They skipped like seven steps to the advanced final portion where they were already coming up with solutions and suggesting things that they might be able to do differently next time to make it better for their partner. They were asking each other questions about how their partner felt with no agenda, no attempt to sort of be like, well, do you think you're feeling that way because, which straight couples do all the time, um, you just see this humility and openness. It's lovely. Yeah, it's lovely. But I wonder if uh, maybe watching too many Hollywood films, if some of the drama, some of the tension <laughs> is required for a passionate lifelong romance. No, it's not. And that's great news. So we actually know yes. that the closer you feel to your partner. So if, I mean, you're, you've talked a lot about beauty mm -hmm. and you can ignite that beauty, that interest, right? So when you're falling in love, it's usually that a person is sort of a mystery to you and you're uncovering these layers that you find really appealing. Mm -hmm. There are continual layers that you can uncover with your partner over time. I don't think we realize that. I think we get complacent and we think we've had every conversation imaginable. What well else are they gonna do to surprise me? But we don't know the questions to be asking. One of my favorite questions, um, I like turning these conversations kind of into a quiz because I get bored easily. Okay. So you, rather than just asking an open-ended question, um, there's a way you can do this with your partner where it's sort of like the dating game. Like, mm -hmm. what is my as of yet fondest but unrealized life dream? And see if your partner knows. You might not even know. Mm -hmm. They might know you better than you know yourself. That in and of itself is a beautiful reminder of the relationship and how special it is. But then also um, when they say it or when you realize or have to think critically, like what is my husband's as of yet unrealized but fondest life dream? And then you can talk about it. You just, I don't know, you just kind of transcend into this new area and you feel tight again. You feel like you feel close. Well, you really talk to each other. Like I, I've- yeah. uh, I've recorded, and without intending to publish, uh, podcasts like this mm -hmm. with microphones, with 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 friends, with people close to me, because it's literally that you get to ask questions, like as if it's an interview, right? And we don't That's do that exactly. It the way you're talking other. with me, yeah. Sit down with your partner, have that conversation, like years later, right? Show interest, actually be curious, see see what they surprise you with, and actually what you learn is you don't know the answers to most of these questions. 100%, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, like what? what's your favorite movie from the 80s? You might not know the answer to that. It's like those first date right. questions or whatever. Or what's your favorite movie this year and why? Yeah. And why, yeah. It's fascinating. Mm -hmm. It is.
It's hard to do that because I think that you'll probably be offended at first, how little the other person knows. <laughs> so I think it, you have to work through that. You know, I actually find that there's this rekindling mm -hmm. because partners are shocked that their partner does know so much about them, oh. especially if they've been feeling dissatisfied or disconnected. It's a reminder of all the good that's still there. 